You want to face the family? Let's face the family. Welcome guys to the Overclocked Face the Family Guide. Today we will be going over these four things in order, so if you need to know something specific, just skip to the timestamps shown on screen. Now, let's go face the family. So if you're new to this or you forgot what the facility managers do because it's been 10 years since you've done a facility, I'm gonna go through a quick rundown of all of their cheats. If any cogs die in the foreman's presence, he will heal for 225 HP and will gain a permanent 20% damage boost. The supervisor is quite literally the opposite. His insurance policy will remain active as long as there is at least one other cog on the field. He will use his insurance policy if he does not have max HP at the end of the turn, granting him 225 HP and a permanent plus 5 damage boost every time he uses it. The head attorney does not like combo damage. If he takes combo damage and lives, he will object to your combo damage, healing the combo damage he was dealt in the process, and retaliate with an unavoidable guilt trip, dealing one third of the original combo damage dealt. There is a chance, however, that the objection gets overruled, in which case, nothing happens. The club president will use extra tip if any of his colleagues are lured, which will heal the cog for 225 HP. This will unlure himself and the cog he gave the extra tip to, which allows both of them to use their attacks this turn. Alright, now that we went over the facility manager's basic cheats, let's talk about their extra cheats. You can determine what cheats a manager has by looking at their prefix or hovering over their cheat description. There are a total of 24 unique managers and I will be going over them all. I will also be putting them on a priority list, going from top priority to low priority. There is however a varied priority section because sometimes one manager may be top priority but other times they may be low priority depending on the circumstances. Anyways, let's begin with the foreman. The explosive foreman has 720 HP and will automatically self-destruct after 2 rounds. If he does, he will deal 200 damage to the cogs and 50 damage to the tunes. He will also provide the remaining cogs with the 1 round lure resistance. This cog is generally a mid-priority because usually the explosion isn't too detrimental and in most cases, you can let him explode without incident. The Sleepy Foreman has 600 HP and is identical to the sleeping cogs you fight during the Feather Better. He will be napping for 2 turns, taking and dealing reduced damage. After his nap is over, he will heal for 600 HP which will make him overcharged. This cog is low priority because while he's napping, he does a lot less damage and even after his nap is over, it is really easy to get him out of overcharge and besides the napping part, he really doesn't do anything much else. The Contractor Foreman has 950 HP. After the first turn is over, he will apply Dance Partners on him and another tune, where they will deal more damage to each other, but less to everyone else. This cog is mid-priority because that tune won't be able to do much to other cogs until the contractor is defeated, but it isn't really the end of the world. The Burning Foreman has 810 HP and will always use an unavoidable cigar smoke on two tunes, which applies a debuff that deals 15% damage every turn for two turns. This cog is a low priority as his damage output is really low in comparison to the other managers here and in general there are just worse managers to deal with. The red tape foreman has 770 HP and will always use an unavoidable red tape on two tunes which applies reward cooldown for two rounds. This cog is a high priority as he will be constantly putting tunes on reward cooldown leaving you vulnerable to RNG, and if it's combined with this next manager, it can make runs go south very fast. The Sniper Foreman has 900 HP, who will double the damage done on any tune that has reward cooldown. As an example, if a tune on reward cooldown gets hit by a 36 damage tee off by the club president, the Sniper Foreman will snipe that tune for an additional 36 damage which can very quickly stack up 
as he can activate this multiple times per turn. This cog will go into the very priority section. If no one is on cooldown, then this manager won't really pose any threats. But if everyone is on cooldown, you might want to consider killing this one as soon as possible. Next up are the supervisors. The Confused Supervisor has 770 HP and is considered both a supervisor and a head attorney, meaning he will retaliate against combo damage if he gets dealt with combo damage. At the end of the turn, this supervisor will use Content Sync which will switch around the gag order, and this gag order will persist until the fight is over. This cog is a low priority as aside from affecting the gag order, he cannot do much else outside of that. The controlling supervisor has 750 HP and makes any gags that hits multiple targets do 50% less damage. This will include group tune-ups, group lures, zaps, and sound. This cog is a mid-priority because not being able to use group tune-up or zap can hinder some progress, but you will still do full damage with throw, lure, and drop, so it, is, it isn't a total loss. The Spongy Supervisor has 1,250 HP and absorbs damage dealt to the other cogs. This cog is a high priority because if you don't focus on the Spongy, he will constantly heal off the damage and gain multiple damage boosts from his insurance policy, and if not dealt with quickly, can very easily snowball into a loss. The Fraudulent Supervisor has 1100 HP, and every time he attacks a tune, he will deal some damage to himself. While this may seem like a completely worthless cheat, it is used to activate his insurance policy, which instead of getting a plus 5 damage boost, he will gain a plus 10 damage boost, and will heal off the damage that he dealt to himself in the process. This cog has a varied priority. If he isn't too strong, then you're safe to leave him alone for a while, but once he starts getting damage, you may want to consider killing him as soon as possible. The Abacus Supervisor has 760 HP and will require you to hit him specifically with the combined level of gags. This can be something like under 13 gag levels or above 18 gag levels. If you fail this requirement, he will retaliate with an unavoidable 45 damage synergy. This cog is a low priority since he either forces you to kill him or lets you deal with other cogs, so he is never too big of a threat unless you are running low on powerful gags. The Accountant Supervisor has 765 HP and will require you to hit a specific number of cog targets. If you fail this requirement, he will retaliate with an unavoidable 45 damage synergy similar to the Abacus. He can ask anywhere from 1 to 4 targets. Just as a small reminder that group lore will count as 4 targets. This cog is a high priority as he can really mess up specific strategies, especially if he asks for 3 targets. So make sure to take advantage of the 1 target if you can. Alright, now on to the head attorneys. The Chrono Head Attorney has 865 HP and will speed up the battle timer by plus 50% every round. This cog is a high priority as the battle speed will be constantly increasing until this cog is dead, and the battle speed can go up to a whopping times 8 speed, which is faster than the pace setter battle itself, so don't let this guy live for too long. The Omnipotent Head Attorney has 725 HP and will ban 2 gag levels ranging from level 5 to level 8 at the end of every round. This cog is a mid priority as while he can ban significant gag levels, it probably won't ruin your plans too much. The Monolithic Head Attorney has 720 HP and will ban 2 gag tracks at the end of every round. This cog is a high priority because being able to ban tune-up is a huge detriment, and he can do this multiple times in a row, meaning you want him gone as soon as possible. Not only this, but in rare occasions he can create impossible rush jobs. Wait a minute, rush jobs? 
The Laborious Head Attorney has 900 HP and at the end of every turn will create a rush job which forces Toons to hit a cog with a specific gag. If you fail to do this, you'll be hit with Hurry Sickness, which increases in damage every time they use it and makes your gags less effective for one round. This cog is mid-priority as the rush jobs don't really hurt your team too much and usually you can pile on the cog with the said rush job. The Overseer Head Attorney has 660 HP and will reduce all combo and knockback damage dealt to any cog to 1. Whatever comeback and or combo damage the cog was supposed to take will instead heal. So if you did 150 knockback damage, it would heal for 150 instead. This cog is a mid-priority as Zap is still a valid option, but if you do want to do big damage, you will have to get rid of this guy first. The Sneaky Head Attorney has 660 HP and will always switch with another cog before the tunes get to attack similar to the Prethinker. This cog is a varied priority as the less cogs there are, the less effective this cheat becomes and because he is guaranteed to move, you can somewhat predict how the turn is going to turn out. And finally, let's go over the Club Presidents. The Chip Fan Club President has 920 HP and functions very similar to the Chainsaw Consultant. For every gag, excluding Lord that attacks him, he will gain 1000 RPM and depending on his RPM at the end of the turn, determines what cheat he will use. At 1000 RPM, he will use the Litigator Snap, causing a tune to take 25% more damage for 2 rounds. At plus 2000 RPM, he will heal 10 times the amount of damage he dealt to the tunes. At 3000 RPM, he will use the Bio Bello cheat, cleansing all cogs of debuffs. At 4000 RPM, he will snipe 2 tunes for 50 damage. This cog is low priority as you are free to completely ignore him and he won't do a single thing besides attacking. If you ever do decide to attack him, you can always force the Bayou Bello, as this does absolutely nothing to the tunes. The Mulligan Club President has 870 HP and will gain an extra attack at the end of every round, which can stack up multiple times. This cog is high priority as the more attacks he gets, the more damage he'll be capable of doing, so make sure you kill him quickly. The Shivering Club President has 815 HP and becomes frozen when soaked. If he gets attacked by 3 tunes in a single round, he will retaliate with Deep Freeze, which causes the cogs to act before the tunes and disables Unites for 2 rounds. If he is defeated while frozen, he will shatter nearby cogs and apply Slush Fun, which causes them to take 40% less damage for 2 rounds. This cog is low priority as if you completely ignore him like the Chip Fan Club president, he isn't capable of doing anything, allowing you to go for much more dangerous cogs. The Puzzling Club president has 765 HP and will grant the first tune entering the battle the Confused effect, and he will confuse another tune at the end of every round. Confused disables your group effect gags and will cause your target to be randomized. Just as a small reminder, you will never be able to hit your intended target if you are confused. This cog is high priority as being confused pretty much leaves you completely helpless and you want to negate RNG as much as possible and face the family. The Ancient Club President has 800 HP and will hit 2 tunes with an unavoidable driver attack, which applies a negative 25% gag effectiveness debuff on those tunes. This cog is a low priority because the gag effectiveness doesn't really matter too much in the long run and there are likely more dangerous cogs to deal with. And finally, we have the High Stakes Club President who has 844 HP and will randomly promote demote or destroy gag levels. This cog is a varied priority. If you want to test your luck with this guy, by all means go for it and leave him alive as long as you want. But in an environment where sometimes 50 damage can mean the difference between life or death, I personally would not risk it. 
Alright, so now that we have this nice priority list, make sure you study up because we're gonna completely throw it out the window because now we have unstable cogs. Unstable cogs have a low chance of replacing any cogs that are in this factory. There is, however, a highly unstable version of Face the Family where every fight is guaranteed at least one unstable cog. Unstable cogs have twice the amount of HP and at the end of every turn they will transform into a completely different manager. They can turn into any of the cogs I've mentioned previously with the exception of Explosive, Sleepy, and the Contractor Foreman. In most cases, you want to kill these guys last because the stable ones pose more of a threat depending on what they are and the stable ones are easier to kill because of their relatively low HP values. Just remember to keep track of what the unstable cogs turn into because they might force you to change your initial plan. I'm talking about you, accountant. Alright, so now that we talked about the unstable cogs, let's talk about the nuclear family. The nuclear family is always located in the center silo and have the exact same modifications that the unstable cogs do. But instead of gaining times 2 HP, they gain times 8 HP, and they also gain a times 2 damage modifier. But don't worry, when fighting the nuclear family, you will gain the prismatic buff which triples your laugh and gag damage. When fighting the nuclear family, it's best to pick a single cog and focus them down as much as possible. The less cogs you have on the field, the easier the fight becomes. Try and prioritize the cogs that have the most damage boost, as damage boosts will be very common in this fight, especially if you get a lot of fraudulent supervisors. This fight is mostly about following the rules the cogs set out for you and taking the least damage possible if you can help it. Save you nice for when you really really need it because sometimes the RNG can be really unforgiving in this fight. Alright, that pretty much covers up everything you need to know about Overclocked Face the Family. Now, let's go over some general strategies, tips, and situations that tend to come up quite a bit in here. Coming with max gags, I know this one is obvious, but this is not meant for the weak tunes at all. If you ever only have one club president on the field, you can use a single lure on the club president and he will be unable to attack or activate extra tip unless it's a mulligan. If you ever have two club presidents on the field, don't even bother group luring as every cog will be guaranteed to unlure and they will get healed because of it. Sometimes you'll have a situation where you can't really do anything without being retaliated against or taking a lot of unwanted damage. If at all possible, sometimes luring and tuning up or passing is a completely valid strategy. It is somewhat rare that this happens, but it does pop up every now and then, so just know that doing no damage in a turn can be very helpful. A good way to get rid of head attorneys is with trap, throw, and drop. No combo damage is dealt in the process, and it's very helpful, especially if you have a sneaky head attorney jumping all over the place, or if you have your gag order mixed up. If you have the damage output, getting rid of a cog at the very beginning of the fight can prove very helpful, as not taking damage from a fourth cog can go a very long way. Don't hesitate to use your level 8 gags. Use them as much as you can, because most of the time you want the fights to be over as quick as possible, especially if you have unstable cogs in the mix. Which goes along really nicely with this next tip. This is a very nice place to use your single gag ups, as I'm pretty sure you have a million of each just sitting there. If you get unfavorable gag barrels, have some people throw out some single gag ups, especially if you're about to enter the nuclear family. Just make sure you delete your gag so the unite doesn't go to waste. Single target lures prevail in face the family as there's a high chance you won't be able to use group lure depending on the set and it synergizes very well with throw, as $50 bill and 3 cakes slash weddings do significant damage to any manager you want to get rid of. If you can help it, please do not do a long factory, it is never worth it. You're guaranteed at least 8 unstable cogs in a highly unstable overclocked face the family, 
And it's much better to die at the end of a short 40 minute factory than it is to die at the end of a long 2 hour factory. Sometimes, despite all your best efforts, the set becomes too uncontrollable and everyone dies as a result. If you're having really bad RNG and you keep dying and getting frustrated, you can always just take a break. Come back to it when you're more relaxed and it will help you focus a lot more. And finally, please have some Unites before coming in here. Anyone and everyone can be put on reward cooldown at any given time. And there are going to be plenty of situations where RNG will not be nice to you and lead to some uncontrollable deaths. It's best that everyone has Unites repaired so you can mitigate RNG as much as you possibly can. And that's everything. I hope you all enjoyed the video and got some insightful information out of it. I am still working on the Chainsaw Consultant Guide. I promise it's still being released. You just gotta give me some more time. But anyways, thanks for watching and have a good night.